good evening everyone um, going to uh, go to bed pretty soon but I, uh, I had one little thing that I wanted to um, kind of show you all um, before I went to bed and that is basically I've been developing um, a scenario uh, or two well I'm starting with one um, in uh, Katakota and uh, basically I want to kind of show you how it all works reframing my browser so you can actually see it all. So this is basically the scenario I'm developing and it's just a very simple um, you know OpenShift demo where I'm basically just gonna um, be putting together a simple JBoss app and I'm still developing this scenario so it's not really done yet but I wanted to kind of show you how easy it was to actually kind of put something like this together. Um, to do the scenario you kind of hit start and then you get uh, there's a, be a terminal up here which eventually I'm gonna put you know, some stuff where you, you type in some code and stuff like that, and then there's a shell down here. And the cool thing about um, this particular shell um, is that I have OpenShift actually uh, available in this environment. So um, I can run OC commands, so I can say, you know, OC projects and stuff like that, and you can see that it's running OpenShift, and, uh, you know, and then over here on the left side is all instructions that I wrote. So, you know, basically I'm telling you, you know, um, you interface with OpenShift, you know, using the OC command and you basically use this command to create a project and you just click on that and it creates the project. And then uh, you can, you know, run this OC projects command. You can see that I've created a project. You hit continue to kind of move to step two. Uh, and then I talk about, you know, kind of the different things that, uh, are in the Kubernetes, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of framework, which is what OpenShift uses. So I'm kind of explaining what we're actually building, and uh, you know, basically, um, the thing that I want to, uh, you know, do is uh, is run a JBoss server, right? So basically, I create a new app that uh, runs, you know, JBoss seven. So I just click there, and uh, it takes a little second here, you know, to run. And basically, what it's kind of doing is pulling images. In the background but it actually you know pulls it down and then uh, I can run you know OC status and I can kind of see you know that it's doing a deployment and this takes a few seconds but eventually it will deploy and uh, I also have you uh, I basically further down here in my explanations I talk about the OC get status command but then I also uh, have this OC get all command which basically will give you all of your you know re uh, resources Oops, I was partly typing a command when I clicked on the OC get all so uh, oop, click it again and as you can see it's all my uh, my resources um, including, you know, my image stream, my deployment configuration, a replication controller, a service, and then a uh, the deploy which is running, but then it's now creating a container. And uh, I do OC status. And basically, okay, so my deploying, uh, oh, so it's still deploying. But, so give it a second. This is not a super fast environment. But that's okay, kind of okay, because it's it's really just for training. It's not really you know meant to be a performance environment, which is fine. You know when you're when you're learning stuff, you just kind of want you know to see stuff happen. All right, so now there's a pod you know running there, and uh, basically you know I continue on to the next step, and now I want to kind of you know verify um, that the thing is actually running. So what I do is I actually go and I get the um, sorry that was all the pods that are running. Um, okay, maybe that command didn't work. Oh, no, no, you know, I'm sorry. Um, this is the output from the describe command. So I, I, I describe, you know, basically that pod. And what I'm looking for is that IP address, 172.18.03. And then what I can literally do is just do a curl 172.18.0. refuse sorry because it's on port 8080 there we go and there's jboss eap7 
and uh, it has, uh, you know, lots of Red Hat stuff in it. So anyway, that is the scenario so far that I've written. Okay, so now how do I actually go and, and you know, build this? So um, in the background here, I have, uh, you know, my, uh, this is IntelliJ, and this is my project here. And uh, essentially what I have is, is this is all actually committed to a Git repo, and there's actually a webhook so that whenever I commit anything into, um, you know, if I go and I ch update this scenario, it will actually go and, you know, and I'll push it out to my GitHub repository. And then there's a webhook from GitHub to Katakoda, which actually will, you know, notify Katakoda, hey, the scenario has been updated and it will pull from the repository and it will update, um, you know, on Katakoda. So um, all you have to really do is, is do everything through GitHub you know, you update your scenario here, and then you push it, and then it automatically will update on, on Katakoda. Um, there's a bunch of different files in here. Um, the m kind of main one is this index uh, JSON file, and it talks about, uh, you know, it talks about, you know, this is my demo, and, and what is, it's a, you know, example application using OpenShift, you know, what level is it, um, how long is it going to take, here are the steps, you know, step one was create a new project, step two was create a new service, step three was verifying the service, you know, was servicing requests. There's a, a, a section for, you know, an introduction, so you can kind of describe the scenario that you're, you're going to put, and then there's a finish where you can put some kind of final text um, that you want to show when the scenario is done. Um, steps are done in what's called um, basically a markdown. So it's very simple syntax. So, and uh, IntelliJ has a markdown previewer, so you can kind of see, you know, what what it's going to kind of look like. And then, um, you know, this is basically how you do a header um, with these little pound signs. So, um, so I have my paragraph here, and then a header, and then uh, you know, I'm basically saying you can create a project with this. And then you'll see there's this little tick mark, and uh, and then it's followed by another tick mark, and then this this uh, double curly brace execute. And this is how you create the buttons that you can actually click on and it'll actually put commands into the terminal and execute them. Um, and so um, basically there's that. So that's, you know, that's a step. And, uh, you know, there's step one, step two, here's my intro. Very all just basically text. The, the other part of the magic happens, you know, in, in this, which, uh, you know, if I go down, scroll down a little bit farther, um, there's this environment section, and basically there's a UI layout uh, uh, configuration. And the one I have chosen is uh, the terminal editor. So when I, um, when I went to my scenario, the terminal editor basically means there's an editor and a terminal together. Um, you can have just a terminal, you can have multiple terminals, you can kind of pick all kinds of different layouts. Um, and then... Basically, this UI message um, is kind of just uh, what happens when a, a terminal comes up. You know, it's like, oh, your interactive, you know, uh, terminal. I actually didn't change this, so it says, you know, start uh, Kubernetes, you know, using launch. And, uh, you know, when I scroll up to the top of my window window here, you can see that's exactly what it says. So I didn't change that. And then the last little bit here down here is this back end. And basically... Um, it's just kind of the backend image that your your terminal is going to be running. Like uh, it's basically a container base, right? So there's a whole bunch of different ones that are available. Um, you can have like Java or Bash or you know there's just all these different kind of base images you can have. And uh, the one I particularly picked in this case, of course, is OpenShift, which basically means you get an OpenShift container that ha OpenShift's running and everything. So. There's a little bit of configuration to kind of set up the environment for the scenario. But then, you know, once you have that, so you have this interactive terminal that, you know, has your image running in it. Um, and eventually I'm going to put, you know, stuff in here. You can actually add files to the GitHub so that they'll actually become available when the scenario starts. You can uh, execute commands before, uh, you know, when the scenario first starts up. So if there's anything you need to do to kind of initialize your environment for the scenario, you can execute those commands. Most of the rest of it is just is just writing the steps and just kind of walking them through it, and then having them so they click on commands and they do stuff, and uh, you know, and this is really a fully functional terminal. So, you know, they could uh, they can do all kind of kinds of things in here. So you know, the you're really kind of only bounded by basically what you could actually do in a, in a in a container. 
you know, that is running a particular, you know, base image. So uh, the options are very extensive and it's very cool. And uh, I, I literally wrote this this morning and, and literally it only took like, once I figured out, you know, how to, how to get things into GitHub and, and sync them correctly, you know, I could literally, I really wrote, you know, these three steps in a matter of 10 minutes. So it, it was not hard at all. And, you know, the next steps I'm going to just go and have them actually, you know, uh, I'm going to put a war, you know, file and then have them do some coding and then, you know, push it in and, and show them that, you know, you can put an application in OpenShift in literally minutes, which is kind of the whole point of this. So that is Katakoda and that has been what I'm doing with it. Um, definitely check them out at uh, www.katakoda.com. Yes, I want to leave www.katacoda, K-A-T-A-C-O-D-A.com. And uh, there's a whole bunch of scenarios in here. Um, so if you haven't checked that out yet, um, definitely come in here. There's a whole bunch of like different courses that, that have been put together. But then you can go and uh, you can actually um, you know teach as well. So you can build scenarios and it's very easy to sign up. And it, it uh, like I said, it has great integration with GitHub. So I would suggest, you know, doing that so that you can put your scenarios into GitHub and then just and then uh, sync them over here. And, uh, you know, my, my profile uh, is uh, katakoda.com slash OS Ninja. Uh, I'm still just getting started. So I, I, I just have three scenarios and one of them is the Hello World scenario that they provide. So um, there isn't a lot here yet. But uh, since I just got started, um, but I will be adding some scenarios because I'm hoping to use this, uh, you know, tool as a way to build, you know, tutorials for, you know, developers on my team who are new to containers and, and OpenShift and haven't done any of it at all. So um, it should provide them a much easier way to kind of get going than to read just kind of boring documentation and, well... I'm not going to say boring content documentation, but you know, but you know how it can be, you know, where um, it's kind of hard to uh, take what you what you read and actually have it translate into you know real experience. Like this, you're you're reading, but you're also doing, and doing is the way to really learn. So, I'm very excited about this, and uh, I hope that that uh, people find this useful. So, um, remember to subscribe and send me feedback. Thank you very much.